you have said what happened in Minneapolis to George Floyd and, and everything that's happening there and around the country is a crucial test of your profession. You've, you've said that. It's a crucial test of our profession in terms of law enforcement. I need to ask you this because some of the latest news is that President Trump, as we know, has had a conference call with governors. And some of that audio has come out and we're using it. And in it, he says to governors, he says, you're weak. He says, many of you should be, you know, not showing this weakness. We're laughing stocks. You need to dominate. You need to dominate. I want to ask you not to if you don't want to comment on the president of the United States. But is the right direction for police today in this environment to go out and dominate and to show that they're, quote, unquote, not weak? What, is, what should the police be doing now to calm this terrible situation? Let, let, let me just say this to the president of the United States on behalf of the police chiefs in this country. Please. If you don't have something constructive to say, keep your mouth shut because you're putting men and women in their early 20s at risk. It's not about dominating. It's about winning hearts and minds. And let's be clear. We do not want people to confuse kindness with weakness, but we don't want ignorance to, ru to, to ruin what we've got here in Houston. And speaking for my colleagues across the country, where their officers are being injured, community members are being injured. If you don't have something to say, like Forrest Gump, then don't say it, because that's the, the basic tenets of leadership, and we need leadership now more than ever. And it hurts me to no end, because we, whether we vote for someone, we don't vote for someone, it's still our president, but it's time to be presidential and not uh, try to be like you're on The Apprentice. This is, this is not... This is not Hollywood. This is real life, and real lives are at risk. And I ask the American people to please join with the police, stand together. Let's shift this to where it needs to be, to the voting booth. Pay attention to the hearts and of the people that we elect. And the reason this stuff happens is because too many people right now in this country that are throwing block, uh, bricks and, and damaging property never bother to vote. So you have a choice. Lift up your voice, be heard in the voting booth, and continue to march peacefully so the focus remains on bad policing, criminal policing. And let's be real honest, this is not just about policing. It's about society and this disproportionality yeah. of the things going on in our country, from education to health to food to everything that we all as human beings hold near and dear. So please, uh, please don't, re don't react to that. If we just hug one another, the only thing that will happen to overcome hate is love and love and engagement. Let's engage and let's do what we can control, which is our own actions, our own hearts, and exercise without fail our right to vote. Uh, Police Chief Azevedo, those are very strong words, and, and, and particularly you are a, a Cuban immigrant, you came when you were four years old to the United States, and you are the police chief, the first such, in, in the city of Houston. So I want to ask you lastly, there have been reforms. Uh, planned, made. For instance, in Minneapolis, the police force did implement training on implicit bias, on mindfulness, de-escalation, crisis intervention. It did diversify the department's leadership. It did create tighter use of force standards. It adopted body cameras. In other words, it did all this stuff, but it did not work. Chief Azevedo, what is it going to take? How much reform? How many of these, you know, playbooks? What is it going to take? Listen, uh, Christian, that, that's a great question. And here's my, my response from, the, from my heart. What we're seeing is not just about the death of George Floyd. What we're seeing is a response to not just police brutality. What we're seeing is a response to disproportionality of wealth and everything else in this country. Let's not kid ourselves. Unfortunately, when policing, when, po when good policing happens, which happens every day in our country, it doesn't make the news. Tens of millions of contacts every year in very dynamic situations, it doesn't make the news. We are the most visible cog of government, and when we get it wrong, there's no excuse. We can't excuse it. We have to accept it. 
but don't kid yourself into believing that the rage is just because of what happens with police. It's about society from pre-K education all the way up. So please, let's, let's just keep moving the ball. I promise you that the police chiefs are willing to lead. We need police labor union leaders. It's time for them to either step up and be part of the solution, or we're just going to have to get elected officials to be uh, doing what they need to do, which is to do everything we can to weed out bad cops so we can lift up the very vast majority that are honorable professionals and really deserve our support. Well, Chief Azevedo, we thank you, and we thank you for leading by example. Thank you for joining thank you. us.